Over the past 18 years, we've had a, quite a selection of people turning up with multimeters, or allegedly. Um, we might get something like this, and they'll even smaller, and they'll say, I got this from a toy shop for 10 quid. Any good? No, no. Or they have something like this, which is called a manual one. And you can tell the difference because it's got lots of increments for AC or DC or ohms, which makes our life very difficult and confusing because you've got to be in the right slot to read the display to understand is that component correct or not. So that's too complicated. We've got something even better than that, and this is called a multimeter, hence the name. When I select AC, and I put my black lead in first, and then the red lead in second, this will give me a perfect display of the voltage that I'm reading. And the same thing happens in DC, and the same thing happens in ohms. So auto ranging, but there are different types. The ones that we only allow to use are called Category 3 600 volts AC. Nothing else, no other category, it has to be the 3. Otherwise, any of these will either melt or explode if you get it in the wrong setting. So remember, this is the most important one. And we've got some new rules coming into place about testing before we uh, start taking the boiler apart. And the reason being is, is that for many years, electricians and heating engineers, DIYers, they touch the boiler, which is live and they get electrocuted and it's still continuing and in actual fact it's getting worse so this year as i say 2020 there are some new tested equipments what's the culprit of being electrocuted well it's spurs spurs kill more people you can turn it off remove the fuse and the boiler is still live and i will show you one on a little video in, in a second the other component is this screwdriver known as a neon. Now here, at most training centers, they're, complete, they're completely banned. Not even as a screwdriver, because when you touch the end, a neon lights. But as soon as you touch this, within half a second or less, you can be electrocuted. So these are extremely dangerous. Do not buy them, do not use them at all. A good screwdriver would be something in this range here where it's nice and easy to hold and also if you press it in you can remove the end piece and put a whole load of adapters and these we love because they are brilliant and they'll go right up to a thousand volts so for us that's brilliant another thing we get is something like this this is a ring main tester or sometimes there's a big one which is called a clamp g clamp now as a caster ring main tester, this is a great, very fast thing. So again, that goes on the neutral or earth, and that goes on the live terminal, and it's a very quick and precise way of knowing voltage is going in up to a certain level, because they're not 100%, because they just jump with lights. So they say, oh, you've got between 150 and 200, or whatever the scale chart here is. So as a quickie, that's, that's great nothing wrong with these at all the g clamp that, that quite often we see here do not fulfill the criteria of being a multimeter you couldn't test this sensor with one of those you've got absolutely zero chance uh, in, in doing that so again we don't like to see g clamps at all or, or any other clamps and the clamp is only really for for a amps milliamps etc which we have to stay clear of because amps kill people not volts volts go off but amps actually can kill people another tester that we use and we have to have is something like this this is called a no touch or voltage free pen right so when we go near a boiler and i'm going to do a video you don't touch the boiler you just go somewhere near it but more importantly it goes along the flex or the socket so particularly as i said spurs have this problem that you will turn the spur off remove the fuse but the boiler is still very much live 
so this is one that you just go around and if it lights up and it'll be so sensitive that you could either touch it with your finger and it can light up which means this is brilliant so this is recommended if not compulsory the next thing that we have to look at on our multimeter is a temperature sensor because we have to measure the water output we turn the boiler thermostat to 30 plug this in select 30 in c or just c and that display should come up then we turn it up to 60 the display shows 60 then we turn it back down to 30 and that's it so this is included in all good category 3 multimeters the other thing we're going to have to now is the uh, digital manometers this is the old type one the new type has got two terminals so don't buy these don't use these get the two pin ones so you can do let by etc don't use water gauge it's old-fashioned and it's not accurate these are really really good so you now, can have two spurs or sockets you can have one for the boiler for example in the kitchen but then your controls are in the airing cupboard and there's another spur there which you don't turn off because we don't we just work at the boiler so the as soon as you touch anywhere near the pcb electricity jumps or you touch the board and you burn your fingers which means that you could be unemployed for months on end while your fingers which earn money are unemployed the next stage that we're we're looking at is something like this this is socket and c there are various models so i'll show you the model that's, that that uh, we use so this is the ultimate professional shop around but this is the best make on the planet for advanced isolation testing and all sorts of things like that so this is the very best this is called a proving unit battery powered so you get a whole load of batteries in here that you put in and it's to design to work with this which is an indicator so as always we put the black lead in here first then we get the red lead in here and press down and when the lights come on then you can see that there is voltage or no voltage or whatever's going on so this is a proving kit have a look this is made by martindale they will have a video how to actually use this and there are other videos on youtube so i'm not going to do exactly the same as them because they're the, the firm makes a much better job than i could ever do so remember this is the new thing that we need to have in our toolbox so when we do go to a boiler we can actually test whether the boiler is, is that is actually off and dead or still live which is the case for many many um situations before we use our voltage indicator to do our polarity test and and all the other bits and pieces we have to prove it's working correctly because it's it's a complicated instrument so we have a proving kit which comes in the whole bundle and as you can see there's two probes and there's two neons here so first of all we need to just check that the um the batteries uh, are okay uh, we can use the transformer through this little one that that's 12 volts dc going into here but most of us are going to use the battery so the first test we're going to do is now because it's black it only goes into one of these and it's this side uh, on there and you can see here on the neon it lights up if i put it on this side it doesn't so always remember only one side will work and this is now going to test the batteries and the probe the next stage is going to be it's just to complete the circuit and test this so we put that into there and as you can see all the neons have lit if they don't light up something is wrong and look in the instructions or phone the technical department so this proves that this now can be used safely and accurately um, on the boiler let me show you how you use the voltage indicator which is a requirement now for safety reasons obviously what we've got across the top are four neons um, they indicate ac and dc we've got 50 100 200 and 400 so in a normal house we expect to be having three neons up to 200 volts and then nothing below 400 volts so it's between 200 and 400 somewhere in between uh, the bottom two neons are polarity so first of all i've turned the boiler off underneath uh, but there's still power going into the appliance and we want to check whether the brown is actually live or or it's dead 
whichever. And as you saw by the slide, I've actually swapped them over to simulate a faulty spur because plugs don't have this problem, but spurs do. So the first thing we always do, we're going to put the black probe, no further than that, into the neutral terminal and the red one into the live. And as you can see, we've got voltage going in. To find out which one is actually live, we then put this, where the yellow and greens meet, onto this casing. Press down and we go into the live terminal. And you can see there's no voltage going down the brown wire. So we'll put it into the neutral and there is, and it's cross polarity So therefore, some boilers may not work at all some will be intermittent, some will be very intermittent. So they'll go up to a certain point and then they'll just stop because they need the, the brown wire to carry the voltage to perform the action that that component needs to do. So this is why this is crucial and um, we need this to actually highlight any faults that there are. One more tip I can give you is here on the casing. So some people, when they come here, they'll go casing to live. So if we put it there to neutral, we put it there to live, as you see, nothing is there at all. But if we transfer back down to the earth here, you see, it gives us a true figure. So don't touch this because paint is actually insulation. And this is the way we use a voltage indicator. Another safety tool that we need to have are these socket testers. And here are three different types so we we need to plug this in and see so if we do the the basic one switch it on and if we get the three lights all is well and if there aren't three lights the display down here will tell us what's actually wrong the next one up from that would be something like this where it's now audio and you can possibly hear that And then the, the next best or the ultimate is something like this. This is a QTEC 107 and you can see the things. It's got lights on the top, but it's also got a polarity checker and a RCD checker. Simply by pressing that, it drops out the RCDs. They simply plug into a socket as they all do and um, highly recommended uh, to, to use. So it's either, don't use the basic one because it's not really good enough something like this or better or the qtech one or the socket and c version if you buy that kit <laughs>